Here's a question. Do we ever get any answers in question time? It's supposed to be an important part of the parliamentary process, a chance to keep the government accountable on important issues of the day. In reality, though, it's become a screaming match of insults and abuse, a grubby window through which we've watched a decade of brutal politics and the execution of four prime ministers. As a result, people outside the Canberra bubble are increasingly cynical about out-of-touch MPs, mostly men, who seem to get their jollies bullying each other and their female colleagues. They should just get on with running the country, is your common chorus. Tonight, the Nine Network's political editor, Chris Yulman, reports there might finally be some hope. Politicians are starting to get the message. Good morning, Blacktown West. How are you? This week, as the dust settled on another leadership's bill, another woman deserted the coalition, and question time never failed to disappoint. That was a zinger. Let's, let's play that game again. How many of you were union officials before you came into the farm? The best question of all came from a class from Sydney's Blacktown Public School as they toured the parliament. Why does um, so many Prime Ministers um, get, um, get replaced? As a child spoke for all of us. <laughs> you know what? There are a lot of people asking that very good question. No one can answer it. As the bar for knifing leaders is lowered again, it fuels the perception that politicians spend all their time on gamesmanship and winning the day. Here we go. Who's ever worked in the private sector here? Here we go. Who's ever... I've had many calls from my counterpart foreign ministers who are very politely asking why I'm no longer the foreign minister and what happened to the prime minister. There have been some rather unkind comments about Australia being the Italy of the South Pacific and the coup capital of the world. And the consequences have been great. Yes, they have. In that coup just weeks ago, Julie Bishop lost the race for Prime Minister and now sits on the back bench. Away from the front line, she's now had time to reflect on the combat zone of politics and broken her silence in her first interview since the spill. I think the question time probably does more damage to the reputation of the political class than any other issue. There's far too much throwing of insults and vicious behaviour, name-calling and the like. And the public see that as no better than school children. In fact, not as well behaved as school children. Would you say you've always been an angel in question time? Not at all. As a minister and as a shadow minister, you are judged on your ability to strike a blow against your political opponent. At five to two every sitting day, Tony Smith leaves his office ready to take the Speaker's seat with the 150 members of the House. They want to come in here. Members on my right will cease interjecting. He believes a dramatic shift in the media landscape has changed the way people watch Parliament. Now you can get a minute by minute, blow by blow um, account on social media, which is um, something of a speedway without road rules, really. And uh, at one level, Chris, people have the capacity to see so much more. Ironically, I think at another level, they see less because they're seeing lots of the, the argy-bargy of parliament, but less of the agreement uh, that occurs right throughout the day. On the far side of the chamber, on the cross benches, sits South Australian MP Rebecca Sharkey, who says she struggles to hear amid the din. Sometimes it's like thunder, it really is. Different members, members on both sides. When I started, there were a couple of uh, veterans in the parliament who said, look, this is theatre. And I thought... It's bad theatre. You know, the only ones that are enjoying this are those on the stage. Uh, the audience is not applauding. And it's a shame that a few more of you didn't listen Members to Members on my left. Well. The noise is deafening. It's a wall of sound. It's not picked up, fortunately, on the microphones, but the noise has a physical impact. You feel it throughout your body. It can be quite overwhelming. And intimidating. Yes, and particularly the response, the ridicule, the insults can throw you off your game, but you have to have 
a dogged focus to get to the end of the question or the answer. It makes you wonder what's going through the minds of those who queue for a seat in the public galleries, hoping to see how government works. What do you think when you, you look up and you see school groups who are watching mm -hmm. Question Time? I've got to say, I've been embarrassed at times. I have, I have been embarrassed at times when, I'm, when I've sat there. I mean, I might sound like a bit of a Pollyanna here, but honestly, you know, 25 million people expect better of this place. I mean, I've had many people say to me, I wish everyone in the house could just agree with each other. That would be really shortchanging our democracy. There's 150 members there. Uh, they've got very different political views and they've argued those vigorously at an election and got elected for them to come here and say, well, actually, after all, we now agree with each other on everything. That's not what representative democracy is about and it's not what the parliament is for. You disgraceful, disgusting fraud. Oh, God, sit down. Oh, sit down. No, you sit down. The leader of the opposition slept right through the critical vote. He was drunk. Right will withdraw. Mr Speaker, I move that that snivelling grub over there be no further heard. If I've offended grubs, I withdraw, unconditionally. If Question Time is theatre, there have been some very memorable actors since the TV broadcasts began in 1991. The time has come. The treasure is your seat. The treasure is your seat. And some very, very bitter moments. Order! Give me my valium, Mr. Speaker. He needs it. The member for Goldstein will resume his seat. And you've often compared yourself to an AFL umpire. Essentially, you're there to enforce mm. the rules of the house. And when I became Speaker, the leader of the opposition made that uh, direct comparison and uh, reminded me that the best AFL umpires um, weren't noticed. <laughs> But through this 117-year-long run, the actors have nearly all been men. The ferocious events of bullying of the last few weeks have revealed the thin ranks of women in the coalition, and it's about to get even worse. Do you think if the gender balance was changed in Parliament, so it's roughly 50-50, that that would change the nature of politics? I believe it would make a difference. I have been in a cabinet where I was the only female, and then... Uh, five female colleagues joined me and they were vastly different discussions and debates. You know, and when I look down from the parliamentary press gallery at all of those blue suits, I think, look at that sea of merit. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't is that, possibly Is that comment. how they all got there? Is it all meritorious? Well, of course, you can go through it person by person. I believe that targets are an appropriate mechanism. It's not the only mechanism, but I have seen it work elsewhere. And I hear the jeers and I hear the sneers. Walk out of this building after a bruising question time and it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that it's a waste of time. Add a bitter decade of politics and the brutal execution of four prime ministers and maybe we shouldn't be surprised by what is an alarming number. Less than half of Australians now think that their democracy is working. But here's a question for you. What would you replace it with? Sure, this system isn't perfect, but this is just about the only parliament in the world where the leader of government is called to account on every single sitting day. In the words of Winston Churchill, democracy is the worst form of government, except for every other system that's ever been tried. And Australia's politicians aren't actually at each other's throats all the time. I went to a Canberra pub with two cross-party mates, Labor's Anthony Albanese and Craig Laundy, a Liberal who was very close to deposed leader Malcolm Turnbull. I used to say to Malcolm, don't yell, talk, you know, because the Australian people are sick and tired of us yelling at each other. They view us, because of that one hour and 15 minutes, or other shenanigans, lower than bloody used car salespeople, and we need to fix it. Um, I was... Truth is, much more conflict-based than I am now when I was first elected. Because you realise after a period of time you've got to work with people, outcomes is what is important. Yeah. And that scoring a uh, sort political of cheap points. political point in the short term doesn't really matter all that much. No one remembers it. Is this driving women away from politics? I, I don't think it helps. Yelling, screaming, standing over, intimidating. That extremity on my side that says, this is politics, harden up. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, that is just absolute rubbish. Go back to just 10 years and faith in our parliamentary democracy was at 82%. It's now down below 41%. Does that bother you? I think people out there uh, are prepared to walk away from both parties. Essentially one in three people saying we don't want Labor or the Coalition is a problem because I want stable government in this country. Prime Minister will resume his seat. The man in the umpire's chair, Speaker Tony Smith, showed us how things do get done. He paused our interview to sign off on a strawberry tampering bill that had just passed through the House within two hours and with zero disagreement. Great. You wouldn't want 60 minutes to delay the legislation. No, but it's uh, a sign of Parliament cooperating. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, remember the boy who wanted an answer on the revolving door of leaders? His school was hosted at Parliament by his local member, a Labor man from Western Sydney, Ed Husick. I'm not um, asking for us to engage in a, a national group hug. Uh, what I am saying is, you know, do we have to always be shouty? Do we always have to have that argument just for its own, own sake? And, uh, you know, we, there's something to, you know, just pause for thought. Mm. Do we need to turn the volume down just a bit? I think people are turning the volume down on us. Recently, Ed showed it is possible for Labor and the Coalition to unite in the national interest. Speaking against one senator's bitter attack on immigration, the Muslim MP embraced the Jewish Deputy Liberal Leader, Josh Frydenberg, who's a good friend. You know, I'll joke around with him, the, the, you know, I'll generally disagree with him every time he opens his mouth, you know, <laughs> and he'll probably do the same. It's a question of balance and how far we take things. And uh, I think the concern is that there is just um, toxic debate for its own sake rather than for the argument's sake. So and as for that question... Why does um, so many Prime Ministers um, get, um, get replaced? I got a chance to ask the man who should know the answer. And he said, why do so many Prime Ministers get replaced? When you're asked to do a job, you step up and do the job. He's going to be asked to step up and do jobs over the course of his life, and you prepare yourself to do that when you're called upon. Thank you. Cheers. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.